This week's Slutty Science builds on the Slutty Science from episode 3. In that episode, we discussed how diet culture is based upon capitalism rather than health concerns. We looked into beauty standards, BMI, and the so-called obesity pandemic. Today, I'd like to focus on why diets are scientifically proven not to work. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a foundational concept in psychology. It describes basic human needs, like the two, arguably, most important ones, food and rest. Quote, if those basic survival needs are not being met, it is almost impossible for us to truly move on to any other area of life. So as long as you actively try and consume less food than your body desires, you are still dieting and that will always eventually backfire. Quote, controlling the food you put into your mouth is not how we are wired. It is not how we were made and it is not how we ate for our entire existence throughout history until very recently. Nobody finished a meal before they were fully fed because of portion control. On the contrary, portion control was historically the unfortunate side effects of not having enough to eat. Let us take a closer look at some of the bullshit health rules we have for some reason blindly accepted. Starting off with butter. The big B is often associated with heart disease and frankly that is just untrue. Looking at the facts, heart disease was really rare in America in the early 1900s when people ate loads and loads of butter and saturated fats. Between 1920 and 1960, heart disease rose to become America's number one killer. However, during that exact same period of time, consumption of butter dropped from 18 to only 4 pounds per person per year. Instead, we started massively eating margarine. The war on sugar, a product that has been called more addictive than cocaine and is often considered the cause of diabetes. However, quote, impaired sugar metabolism is the result of diabetes, not the cause. In fact, not eating enough carbohydrates can even make diabetes symptoms worse. Then lastly, our fear of salts. About this, Kresser stated that, quote, when average life expectancy is plotted against a country's average salt intake, the trend shows that higher salt consumption is actually correlated with longer life expectancy. The body mass index we discussed in the study science from episode 3 is considered to be a way of measuring health. A quote-unquote normal BMI claims that you are supposedly healthy. In reality, however, the whole thing is completely arbitrary because many studies have demonstrated that higher BMIs actually have lower mortality rates. Similarly, many studies have shown that weight loss or too much exercise has been associated with poorer health, higher stress hormones, and increased mortality. Concluding this week's slutty science with a suggestion for you, me, and everyone else. How about we stop commenting and assuming people's health by looking at their size, shall we?